creating our portfolio page, adding the portfolio structure. In this video, we will create the structure of our portfolio page. So let's go ahead and do that. This page will be split in two parts. At the top, we will have a filter section to filter on the type of the portfolio projects. And under the filter, we will show our list of projects. So let's set up the structure. For the filters, we will once again use the card component. Then we will have our divider, just like we did for the home page. And under it, we will have a simple div for the mama. It will be our placeholder for our list of projects. So let's create the structure. We can delete the default content. So let's create our mat card. And then we'll have our divider. And finally our div for our list. So let's add the title. We'll be just filter. We will have a label that explains what we are filtering. Let's add a small margin to our label. And we want to make this label bold, so we'll use one of the bootstrap classes. It's called one font weight bold. And this will make our type label bold. And let's see how it looks. So this is our filter part. Now the only issue I see here is I don't like the spacing that there is over here. Let's try to find out where it comes from. And this is coming from our mat card header text. So let's create a CSS class for this. We will call it filter card. And now in our portfolio.scss file at the bottom, we can add our filter card style. And now we can see that the title and our label are aligned. For the type filter, we will be using radio buttons. So let's have a look at them on the Angular Material website. Here we can see an example on how to use the control. The current example here uses template-driven forms. To be able to use them, we will need to import the forms module. Once imported, this allows us to use the ng model. ng model creates a two way binding with the value of the component it's used on. The forms module adds additional elements like change tracking, validation, and error handling. In this small example, we will just use the two way binding provided by the ng model. In this case, the ng model is on the mat radio group meaning the ng model will have the value of the selected radio button. So let's go ahead first and add the forms module to our app.module. So here we can add our forms module. And then we can go ahead and add material radio button module in our material.module.ts. So here we are adding the mat radio module. We can go down to our portfolio page and start creating our filters. So here we will have a mat radio group and underneath we will create our mat radio buttons. So the first one will have the value on. And that's because it will be our default filter that shows every value and then let's create the filters for angular react and view let's have a look at how it looks we can see a spacing issue here so let's add some margins on our radio buttons So for our radio buttons, we'll create 
a margin on the x coordinates of 2. And our radio buttons have decent spacing. Now we need a property that has the selected radio button value. So let's open our portfolio.component.ts. So let's call it selected type. In TypeScript, you can specify a string literal type. So we are going to specify that selected type will only have four values. It will be either all or angular. or react or view. So our string here can only be any of these four strings and no other value. And by default, we're going to assign it to all. To show you our string literal type, let's try to assign a different value to selected type. So if I try to assign uh, a different value than the one authorized. You can see that uh, our ID is immediately complaining and it says that test is not assignable to our type and only all Angular, React and Vue are assignable. Let's remove this. Now that we created our variable, let's go back to our HTML template. First, for demonstration purposes, let's add an interpolation that shows what's the current value of selected type. So here underneath the uh, match algebra, I'm just going to create a div. And inside, I'm just going to show the selected type. And now let's add our ng model to our radio group. So here, we can use the snippet. And this will be bound to the selected type. So let's have a look now. And here below our filter, you can see what's the current value of our selected type. And if I switch, you can see that our selected type has the right value. So this is working properly. So we are done with this part for the moment.